Hi, I'm Max. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you some tips and tricks for how to set up the Viewboard digital whiteboard in your classroom. Important topics we'll be covering include how and where to mount the Viewboard, factors to consider when choosing between a wall-mounted option and a trolley-mounted one, as well as environmental considerations that you'll want to take into account to ensure the best possible operations for your Viewboard. Every classroom is unique. Factors from classroom size to the number of students in the class to the grade level will all impact your choice of both Viewboard and mounting option. Today we're here in a ninth grade classroom and I'll be sharing two different setups with you. First, a wall-mounted configuration and second, a trolley-based one. Most classrooms today make use of a traditional whiteboard, a projection-based whiteboard, or some combination of those two. Familiarity with such a setup will make a wall-mounted viewboard the ideal option for most classrooms. Replacing a projection-based whiteboard with a wall-mounted viewboard, like the viewboard digital whiteboard that we have here today, isn't going to require much change from an instructor's normal workflow, helping smooth adoption. It's also going to help keep valuable floor space clear in the classroom, helping to avoid any scenario where a student might trip over a stand or cable. Selecting the appropriate size of viewboard for your classroom is also important. When making this decision, we recommend that you take into account the level of engagement desirable, as well as the student likely to be seated the furthest from the display in your classroom. So if that furthest student is likely to be seated uh, about 25 feet, say, or eight meters from the display, then an 86-inch display may be best. If, however, that furthest student is likely to be seated no more than 15 feet or about 5 meters from the viewboard, then a 55-inch display may be just fine. Another important consideration is determining the height at which the viewboard should be mounted on the wall, taking into consideration both teachers and students. Although it isn't possible to perfectly accommodate everyone, it's important to make sure that all users are able to easily access the upper display area in order to easily access any on-screen icons. We recommend taking an average height for users in your classroom, both teacher and student, then mounting the viewboard so that that average user's shoulder comes about halfway up the display. This can also be adjusted based on projected use. For instance, in classrooms where the instructor is expected to be the predominant user, you may want to favor their height. In classrooms where students are expected to be the predominant users, then you may want to favor their average height. As we all know, ample lighting is critical to creating a healthy learning environment. And one of the great things about the Viewboard, as opposed to projection-based interactive whiteboards, is that you're not going to need to dim the lights or close the blinds to ensure that students in the classroom can see content on the viewboard. However, it is important to avoid certain lighting scenarios that can impact the functionality of the viewboard. These include avoiding lights mounted directly above the viewboard and facing down onto its screen. Direct sunlight entering the classroom from either side of the viewboard is also important to avoid. Such lighting can negatively impact the infrared function within the touchscreen, reducing its responsiveness to touch. So if your classroom is replacing a traditional whiteboard, be sure to remove any overhead lighting that was used to light that whiteboard, as well as to have shades ready to block any early morning or late afternoon sunshine that might otherwise come in and shine directly onto the surface of the viewboard. For classrooms in hot or humid environments, it's also important to avoid having an air conditioning unit blow directly onto the surface of the viewboard. Rapid changes in temperature or humidity can cause unwanted condensation to gather on the surface of the display, once again, that's going to reduce its responsiveness to touch. When mounting the viewboard to the wall, it's very important to first ensure that the wall can safely support the full weight of the viewboard. This is especially important in classrooms where students may have access to the viewboard without the supervision of an adult. Generally speaking, walls constructed using concrete or brick should be safe to support the viewboard. The important thing in all cases is to first uh, consult with a professional at your institution to ensure that the wall is safe. If it is not, a trolley mount may be the best option. Now a trolley mounted setup may be the best option for your classroom for any number of other reasons. For instance, if there is a need to share a single digital whiteboard between multiple classrooms. If your classroom is utilizing a more modern layout where there's no longer a fixed front of classroom and furniture is regularly rearranged to promote learning engagement. Finally, a trolley mounted option can be best for K through three classrooms where there's a need to frequently lower the level of the viewboard for younger students, or where a significant amount of classroom activity is happening at the level of the floor rather than in chairs. 
Many schools also choose a trolley mounted option for public spaces and specialized learning environments such as libraries, arts and athletics facilities, break rooms, or largely multi-screen scale-up classrooms. Whether you decide on a wall mount or a trolley mount, you will want to make sure that your view board is connected to your school's internet network, and we recommend that you make that connection via Ethernet cable to ensure the most stable possible connection. Where an Ethernet connection is not possible, we do recommend you use a 5 GHz bandwidth variant rather than a 2.4 GHz variant, and we recommend that you ensure the path between your view board and your wireless router remains unobstructed. Just like with your cell phone, updates for your view board software will come directly over the internet. It is always a good idea to keep your view board up to date, so we recommend updating it as directed by those prompts to ensure the best possible user experience for you and your students. Whether you ultimately decide on a wall-mounted setup or a trolley-mounted one, we're confident that with the tips shared today, you're going to have a great experience using the ViewBoard in your classroom. If you'd like more information about the ViewBoard, please visit viewsonic.com education, or you can search ViewSonic EDU on YouTube for more video tutorials.